What's going on everyone? It's Ozzy from Oztox Hardware and I frequently get asked for video card recommendations for around $100. Now before my go-to recommendations were the GTX 1050 from Nvidia or the AMD RX 560. Both of these cards are wonderful if you can find them at their usual asking price of a hundred bucks. The issue is you can't really do that nowadays. With the way the current market is, most of these cars go for $130 or more. And so recommending a brand new video card for around $100 is kind of tough. On the other hand though, the used market is a literal gold mine for powerful video cards at low, low prices. Ironically, thanks to crypto mining, or rather it's crash, I suppose, you can get video cards like RX 470s, 570s, 480s and 580s for only a hundred bucks and currently they are flooding eBay and a lot of your local classifieds if you go out and check. In September of this year I picked up a Gigabyte Aorus RX 570 for only a hundred bucks shipped. Now that in itself is a steal because of its performance, I will get into that a little bit later, but also because of its design. It has a really nice dual fan configuration, it has LED lights on its shroud, and it also comes with a very pretty backplate. I also really like the orange accents on the fan shroud because they complement the Ostox hardware orange and blue color combination. The 8GB reference RX480 that I have, I actually bought a few weeks after it launched in June of 2016. Although I paid about $250 back then, it goes for around 100 bucks nowadays on eBay. As a matter of fact, you can get 4GB and 8GB aftermarket versions for around $110 to $120 after shipping. And if you're a little bit patient and you don't mind going through the eBay auction side of things, you can actually pick up an RX 480 for under a hundred bucks like one of my Discord server members did. And we have the 1050 Ti. I bought it for 130 bucks. It's the EVGA SSC edition through EVGA's B-Stock about a year ago. When it's found at MSRP or less, it's actually a pretty solid purchase, but that's obviously not always the case. The cooler is phenomenal and it has a lovely design. I actually prefer EVGA shroud to the AMD counterparts in this video. And because it doesn't require any external power, it's very efficient. You're probably not going to get any better than 1050 Ti if you're looking for a video card that doesn't require a six pin or eight pin connector. But if your power supply can support video cards that require external power connectors, then the RX cards are honestly your best choice. But don't just take my word for it. Let's take a look at some benchmarks. I took into account the budget of the video cards when comprising the test bench. I understand that if you're in the market for a $100 video card, you're not running enthusiast hardware. So I scaled it accordingly. We have a Ryzen 3 2200G running at stock frequencies, 2x4 gigs of DDR4 memory running at 2666, an ASRock AB350 gaming ITX motherboard, Windows 10 64-bit, Radeon 18.10.1 drivers for the AMD cards, and NVIDIA 416.81 drivers for the 1050 Ti. At the same time, the games I played reflect the monetary value of the cards. I tested mostly eSport titles, with the exception of GTA 5, Far Cry 5, and Wolfenstein, specifically Wolfenstein for the sake of Vulcan. Long story short, or the too long didn't read of the benchmarks, the RX 570 and RX 480 completely demolish the 1050 Ti in almost every game that we tested. It's actually kind of sad how big the disparity is between those three cards, especially considering how small the difference is in their price at both the new segment, the new market, and in the used market too. The biggest anomaly is definitely Wolfenstein 2, which I attribute to Vulkan's API. The RX 570 performs around three times better than the 1050 Ti at the same settings. On the other hand, the gap between the cards closes to only 3% in GTA 5, which does prefer NVIDIA cards and could be a result of a CPU bottleneck but more testing is needed to say for sure. 
Interestingly enough, the RX 570 is on the very heels of the RX 480 in all of the games tested. The biggest disparity was in Fortnite and that was only 7%. So if you overclock the RX 570, then you could potentially have a stock GTX 980-ish for only 100 bucks. Pretty cool stuff. Of course, these two cards don't come without their downfalls. The RX 70 and 80 cards consume about 100 more watts of power over the GTX 1050 Ti. So if you're looking to upgrade a pre-built system, then I don't recommend going for these cards. The 1050 Ti offers a much safer and a better plug and play solution. And also the elephant in the room, and I'm sure a lot of you were waiting for this, these are mining video cards. They were used in mining rigs, which usually run 24 seven. Don't let that sway you though. Treat it like any other used component that you would purchase online or through Craigslist or OfferUp or any other local classifieds. Mining doesn't degrade GPU performance, and although usually video cards that are used in mining rigs run 24 seven, a lot of miners undervolt them, they change voltage settings, they tweak a lot of the stock settings to make it more efficient, to have it run cooler and to have it one run quieter. So essentially, even though they are running at full speed, they're definitely using less power and outputting less heat than a stock version of the video card would. But as a precaution, there are three things that you can do to ensure that your video card is working properly. Now these aren't required, but they are very strongly recommended. So do them if you can. The first thing, check the PCB. Take off the cooler if you can and inspect the PCB for blemishes, burns, or any aberrations. If anything seems wrong, contact the seller immediately. It's better to be safe than sorry. Secondly, apply new thermal paste and thermal pads if applicable. Clean off the old paste with paper towels and isopropyl alcohol. And if you don't have any alcohol, saliva can honestly do the job. Just be a little bit careful and apply new thermal paste. Decent paste costs around five bucks on Amazon. You may need to replace the VRM and VRAM thermal pads as well. Pull off the old ones and place the new ones on there. Decent thermal pads also cost around five bucks on Amazon or eBay. And lastly, do a prolonged stress test. The card shouldn't have any issues running at full speed for a few hours. Install your stress test program of choice, such as Fearmark or ADA64, and leave it running overnight. If you have no issues, then you're pretty much set and good to go. To recap, the RX 400 and 500 series cards are fantastic choices if you're looking for a video card under 150 bucks and don't mind going used. At the current moment, they offer a fantastic price to performance and they are readily available. They're literally flooding eBay and other local classifieds and used markets. Although they do have a few shortcomings, such as a higher power consumption compared to their counterparts like the 1050 Ti, and the fact that they were used in mining rigs, the pros definitely outweigh the cons in this instance. And of course, if you're not super comfortable going used, the new market is still an option for you for these cards. Just recently, RX 570s and 580s, and also the same for the 400 counterparts, have dropped in price dramatically. Right now, you can get a PowerColor 8GB version for 135 bucks after a promo code. On top of that, 580s were just appearing on eBay for only $160 brand new. So, if you're in the market and you want to go new, and you have a little bit more than 100 to 130 bucks to spend, that's also an avenue. But that's it for this video guys. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. And if you did, let me know in the comments below. Hit me up with any other awesome video card deals that you find in your area. Perhaps the RX cards just don't show up. There are probably other options out there for you. But thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video.